Hi, everyone. Welcome back. So I'm really pleased to say uh, that we're going to be joined by uh, the director, uh, Julianne Farrow, and uh, programmer, Agnes Wildenstein. Hello. Can you hear us? Hi. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Melanie. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, should we just start um, by giving Julien um, a warm round of applause for his film? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing the film with us. Uh, so Agnes is going to lead a conversation uh, with Julien. Um, I just want to explain quickly how this is going to work before uh, I hand you over to Agnes. Uh, so if anybody's got any questions, you can ask them via slido.com. Uh, and you put in uh, the hash 723566. And uh, they'll come up on here. And I can uh, relay them for you. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I'll hand over to you, Agnes. Okay. Well, thank you. Julien, welcome again. Uh, I think we can easily say when watching this film that you have been totally reinventing and even expanding the genre of sport documentary. Uh, my first question will be very simple. How did you find these amazing Japanese women? Um, like my all my previous film, um, the subjects start with the, rather than being my my a desire to to work on this uh, subject is more the material. So I found the footage, the archive first, and it it bring it bring me. Um, it led me to led me to the, to the subject. So uh, ten years ago, um, um, a French uh, trainer, volleyball trainer, came to me um, because I'm in charge of a film collection in Paris. It's um, a small cinematic owned by the the French Sport Institute, and so this trainer came to me with uh, two 60 millimeter uh, cans, and so we watched. Uh, those films, and um, I was very impressed by uh, when I saw the the first footage of the of the witches because uh, it was very far from the standard uh, of the '60s uh, regarding um, women's sports. Their their training were so uh, intense, so hard, and it also rang a bell very swiftly, and because those footage were very much alike the anime I used to watch when I was a kid. And uh, so I just discovered then that um, this very famous anime were in fact inspired by a true story. Um, so my desire to, to make a film uh, on, on them uh, increased and I made research and, and to find them it was it took uh, us um, almost one year. It was because I, I started from scratch. It was quite difficult to to geolocalize them. And um, yeah, it took us one year. And I have to face two main issues. Uh, the first one is the fact that I don't speak a word of Japanese. And the second issue was uh, those women uh, were are quite older uh, than I. So I'm, I'm the age of uh, their uh, children. So there is too, too many issues that were solved thanks to the help of, uh, of a famous uh, French interpreter named Catherine Cadou. Uh, she used to, to live in Japan. She worked with many French crew in Japan or um, welcoming friend, a Japanese crew in France. So uh, she was perfect to create this um, link uh, between me and, and them. And she succeeded in, uh, in finding this uh, state of uh, trust and, and 
uh, and friendship because uh, we are very close thanks to thanks to Catherine. So I'm very grateful to Catherine. To Catherine. So basically, that's uh, how um, I went to this um, unusual and beautiful uh, subject. And uh, obviously, you went to Japan to prepare. How did you? How long did it take to while you found this woman? to get close to them, to, to make them accept, to be filmed? So that's what, that was um, Catherine's uh, uh, job, uh, so to speak. So she started um, emailing them, but also just uh, call them. And um, she asked, uh, she, she, she started having a discussion, um, but uh, also daily life discussion, like, uh, you know, um, uh, news from from their children and grand and grandchildren, and then when we have um, this first um, relationship, so to speak, uh, we ask them to meet. And uh, but I was very um, conscious that uh, I really uh, I try not to be impolite or or um, to go too fast. I don't know how. To say that, but um, yeah, I was very. I want to observe all I have to observe to to be um, to be welcome and and not to to annoy them. So we meet them first on June um, 2019, and I choose to uh, to bring with uh, with me only uh, audio recording and no camera because it was too much. They welcome us um, at home, so it's a very private place and to meet a, a totally stranger. So we decided to only um, to interview them uh, with Catherine and, um, and my sound recordist. And we just put a microphone on the table and try to have this discussion. Sometimes it could be uh, a bit touchy, the, the, uh, the question or so it works very well, and um, I work on these uh, audio recordings for for weeks and months, and I choose to um, to make a selection and to build my my voiceover from from these audio recordings, and I ask the players to choose uh, the place, the location for the shooting, because I want to portray them. So. I want to give them the opportunity to, to to tell the story by themselves and to choose the location of their um, shooting um, session of their where where they would be filmed. And um, so I try to match the the location and, and the voiceover uh, so it could uh, be um, relevant. So when uh, Chiba San is um, doing his um, sports uh, training um, at, at the gym club. She's talking about um, the warm up and, um, and the training. And Talida-san is, um, re is uh, recalling uh, all the stories in, in her past while she's playing um, a memory card game. So, um, and and last example, um, Matsumura-san um, told us about the the tour they made um, through Europe in the 60s, a long tour of uh, three months through Europe, and she she's actually traveling during uh, this voiceover. She's uh, in a car, and you can see the the, the surroundings in the background. Uh, moving uh, um, back in, uh, behind the glass of, of our car. So that was the, um, the process of the making. Uh, in first on, on the re audio recording and then in, in October of the same year, um, 20, uh, 2019, we go back for one more week uh, to complete the, the film. Melanie, do we have uh, some questions for the audience? If not, I have plenty. Uh, we've got, yeah, we've got plenty here actually. Yeah, <laughs> as well. So um, the first question 
uh, from the audience is a really good one, which is, uh, why tell this story now? Sorry, can you... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, why tell the story now? Ah, um, that's a good question. Uh, now, because um, we're going to celebrate um, once again um, Olympic Games in, in Japan. So it's, all, it's a period of, a, of a commemoration of, of how to remind um, the people of this um, past and important event. It was the very first Olympic Games in Asia. So I, saw, I thought that it could be um, the right time. Um, but also, I can imagine in the question that it also referred to the, um, maybe to the, to the Me Too uh, movement and to all these um, very sad stories of uh, in France, in UK, in, in Japan, of um, physical harassment or abuse, um, physical abuse or sexual abuse in sports. Which is uh, also, um, which are sadly uh, every day on our newspapers. So it was the right time um, because uh, this story is a very complex story, and it was considered in the sixties. Uh, Daimetsu was considered as a a, a demon coach, and um, I really like to. Um, to explain that the, the difference between, um, uh, let's say, uh, violence, um, uh, harassment, and, and high-level sports is sometimes very thin and like an onion skin uh, thin because uh, high-level sports is, uh, request a lot of, uh, a lot of, of um, sufferings of uh, of commitment and um, when I read uh, comments, uh, especially the Westerners' comments on, on this story, the the journalists and um, Westerners in general were were shocked by the fact that those women were um, treated like this, was was trained like this, and Daimetsu said uh, that. He, he, train, he just trained those women like men. So I really, I was very impressed by this sentence because from then I, um, I just uh, asked myself, um, who is the more progressist and who is the more conservative? Um, because the Westerners were shocked by the fact that those women were um, trained too much. They hurt themselves. And, um, you know, in the 60s in France and most of uh, European countries, women were able to do everything. They could um, drink alcohol, but not too much. They were not uh, supposed to get drunk like men. They could... Um, they could practice some sports, but uh, sparringly, not too much. Women didn't have, they were not allowed to, um, to, to get too, too muscular, too, too muscles and too much muscles or to get bruised or uh, injuries. And for the first time, we faced uh, a group of women that um, train very hard. And they were just uh, pioneers of high-level athletes, women, high-level athletes. But I didn't have, um, it was too, too touchy to, to comment or tell this myself. So um, I asked the players to, to, to testify, to, to give their testimony uh, um, to us, because I was sure that those women were not victims but very tough women. And I think it was interesting in this um, 
um, period of questioning and um, not to um, not to put the women yeah you because the the westerners were just uh, pretending to to speak in the name of uh, women dignity uh, women emancipation but I thought that um, on the contrary they did just um, in their mind women uh, didn't have to 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 train and to do this so it was very um, uh, complex and I thought it was a good uh, example to to look at um, it doesn't help uh, it's not simpler uh, it's, it's not more simple it's more uh, complicated but um, I think uh, we deserve also uh, to to face some very complex uh, situation we actually have a question about uh, Daimatsu which is uh, asking what happened to him after the witches Olympic win and did so this is the coach. Did his reputation uh, as a demon help or hinder him professionally? Um, so Daimatsu, the you not very yeah he quit the um, the Nichibo uh, factory textile um, program um, like most of the players that retired. Um, only the, the two substitutes that you you saw in the film, Shinozaki and, and Chiba-san, they, they, they keep uh, playing and, and win. Uh, and they won um, other titles and they were super, uh, super, super athletes. But Daimatsu uh, um, stopped with the, with the, the French, the national uh, Japanese team. But he was um, uh, hired by uh, by by China, and he helped uh, to develop not only volleyball, but um, I think he also helped for um, um, the ping pong uh, teams of China. And he's very he's uh, um, really uh, fa he's famous in China too. Uh, so he helped um, other countries like this to uh, um, to create some training program. So is a demon um, um, reputation was uh, I think was uh, break down or was uh, didn't um, stay anymore uh, after the, the the gold medal and and the. And the players were very close to him, and and they they kept explaining that um, they were very grateful to him because uh, uh, he knows how to lead them to uh, to the top uh, ranking. So um, the demon uh, nickname and and reputation uh, didn't um, last long after this um, great achievement and. Uh, the fact that the players uh, start to be very popular in Japan and um, everyone understood that uh, Daimetsu was not um, a mean, uh, a wicked man, but um, he was very close to the players and um, he knew that, um, he knew the price um, we have to, to pay to reach um, the, the first place and, and, the, and the gold medals. And going back to the women, we've got a question asking what was the team's reaction when they saw the finished film? Assuming they've seen the finished film. No, they haven't seen yet the film. So, yeah, yeah it's quite, it's very hard because uh, it looks, uh, for me, I feel that my job is not um, completed. The film is completed, but uh, they give me, they gave me um, a lot, and I want to to give them back. And it's not yet done because of the pandemic. And um, I I know that Catherine uh, tried to keep them in touch about uh, the the first screening in Japan. It was. Uh, uh, scheduled before the Olympic Games, but 
due to the, um, the bad situation in Japan, it, it, it's postponed to uh, next uh, autumn. And they have to, to, to wait a um, few months more. And it's very difficult for them and for me because uh, uh, I look forward very much to meet, meeting them uh, once again and showing them uh, the film. And I have to, to tell you also a sad news about it because Tanida-san, the, the one who's playing memory card with, his, uh, with her granddaughter, sadly uh, passed away last Christmas. Um, it was very unexpected because she was not suffering from um, illness or, or whatever. And so it was very sudden. But we were in contact with our family and daughters. And um, they sent us a very, um, a very a beautiful message. And I was very touched about it. Tanida San just said that uh, she was waiting for two things, um, watching the film and uh, be amongst the last um, torch holders because she, she was um, asked to, to hold the Olympic flame, the Olympic torch uh, through the stadium. So it would have been a, a great honor uh, for her. And um, sadly, um, she passed away before. That is really sad. Um, we've, I mean, we've probably only got another couple of minutes, um, but if it's okay, we've got another couple of questions. I mean, maybe just a quick one is to, is asking roughly how much archival footage was there in total featuring the volleyball team? How much material did you have to play with? Um, so I found in uh, the French Sport Institute in, in our collection, we preserved um, several films that um, I, I was able to, to edit in the film. It was the, the, a Russian film made um, during the World uh, Championship um, in 1962. A French film also made um, during the same event. Um, the one that the trainer gave me to, to me, which was a, a, a Japanese instructional film, is the black and white footage I used during the, the, the party shed um, sequence. And I discovered this wonderful film, um, The Price of Victory, which was uh, directed by a, um, a female uh, director in Japan, Nobuko Shibuya, in 1964. And it was um, a wonderful day when I just discovered this uh, masterpiece because it was uh, shot in uh, 35 millimeter in a very colorful um, negative print. Um, when you uh, when you watch the, um, the players in the factory, in the textile factory, and it was a, a blessing to find this. And I knew from that discovery from, uh, that I was able to, to tell their story because uh, this, this film is, um, is a pure uh, gem. And, uh, uh, and that, of course, the, the IOC materials because I need to to uh, show the, um, the Olympic final. So I asked the IOC um, if I can um, access, access to some of their materials. In the Olympic, um, the official film of a uh, well-known uh, Kon Ichikawa, uh, the volleyball sequence lasts only four or five minutes but I need um, uh, I needed more uh, more time, more more material. So I access um, a twenty five minutes um, 
footage uh, non non used in, in uh, the official film edit edition um, that helped me a lot to uh, to to show and and tell the story of this um, final and uh, and glorious achievement in, in uh, during the Olympic Games. Thank you. I'm, I'm really sorry. I think that we might need to wrap up. We've gone a little over. Um, so I'm afraid I think we might need to leave it there. Okay. But, but thank you so much. Thank you for, for sharing uh, the Witches of the Orient with us. Um, thank you for taking the time to chat to us. Thank you, Agnes. Thank you, Melanie. <laughs> okay, thank thanks. You. Thanks very a lot much. for your invitation. Uh, Thank you, Julia. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Just a reminder that the Witches of the Orient is up for the uh, Audience Award. You can go to chefdocfest.com forward slash vote uh, to rate uh, this and your favorite films. Um, again, thank you. <laughs>